Um, hello, everyone. And on the last session of the last day of the of, of summit, I think everyone will agree with me that it was quite a long week. We are running on fumes, and I even more appreciate you coming here and join me to on the update of our of our glorious project that Kola is Kola Team One. So. My name is Michał Estrzemski. I'm, uh, I'm PTL of Kola. Uh, you can find me on IRC. That's probably the best way to contact me, uh, INC0 on OpenStack Kola. And uh, let's get to it then. So probably most of us know what Kola is, but let me rephrase it. Kola is a deployment tool of OpenStack with Docker containers. And uh, our full mission uh, goes like that. Like, Kola's mission to provide production-ready containers and deployment tools to operating OpenStack clouds. That means uh, we want to provide images for other people to consume. And by that, I mean, and uh, we have three sub We have three projects under Kola umbrella or deliverables. Kola itself. Is uh, uh, Kola itself is just image-based. Uh, I mean, images, image definitions in, in Docker files. Uh, you can find them uh, in Source Docker, and some building infrastructure for them. Uh, our images are. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, long, it was long day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, so yeah, images. That's what Kola is, and how to build them. And uh, deployment mechanisms, we also have two of them currently. We deploy our Kola images with Ansible. That's, uh, that, that project has a surprising name, Kola Ansible. We also have Kola Kubernetes, which, well, deploys it on top of Kubernetes using Helm. So a little bit of history. And we, uh, our project was <coughs> initially conceived around Paris Summit. And uh, back then there were like two people. I, I wasn't there. I joined the project around the Vancouver Summit. And uh, since then, we grew. Uh, currently, uh, currently, according to the latest user survey that came out in April, we are uh, at 13 uh, percent of production or test phase deployments for. Uh, which that, that spans between 4% production and 9% in test phase. And uh, we have very good uh, growth of interest rates because currently we have pretty steady growth of 50% more people are being interested in our project release to release. So I think that's, a, that's fair to say that uh, we're doing something good, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah. Almost one third of, uh, of uh, OpenStack community uh, expressed interests with Cola project, according to the latest user survey. Uh, so let me start with community update. Uh, to me, projects are about community; they're not about code. So I think this is this should be first one to uh, to show. In Cola, we value diversity in our community. So far, we don't have any rules for it because we never had to, because we have no, currently no company has more than 20%, no single company has more than 20% of our reviews. That means that, that means security. That means we're not driven by some hidden agendas of our business people. We're driven by, by community. And if one company would will you know figure out hey we don't do, want to do OpenStack for whatever reason, Cola will survive. We're very globally distributed. In fact, uh, I don't want to uh, say for sure. I don't want. I don't have the, the numbers, but I, by now I think my, most of our core reviewers will, are from either Europe or Asia, and top reviewers for sure. It's, uh, we, are very, we are, I mean, uh, yeah, well, globally distributed, sorry. <laughs> so 
uh, yeah, and during pike release, we had more than we have 30 company, different companies contributing to Cola. That goes to diversity. Uh, in Okata, we had almost 180 reviewers total. Granted, most of them did one review, two reviews, but that's, if you combine, if you multiply it over 180, and a lot of people actually did much more reviews, that uh, that's, that gives you quite a nice number. And kind of also shows how, how, how much we grow. Uh, over 30% of reviews are done by others. And why that mean, what that means is, uh, in terms of, uh, this, it, it, this is, com this is uh, in terms of companies. Which means, it, not only almost 20, the, no company has 20 more than 20% of uh, reviews, a lot of people that are unaffiliated or just happen to come over is quite high, the number of people who did reviews. And, and we have almost 50% number uh, increase in reviews in Okata since Newton, given the fact that Okata was much shorter cycle. Yeah, well, 100, uh, yeah, uh, uh, 1,300 comets in Okata, 200 more than Newton during shorter cycle. That kind of shows how much we're growing as a project. So uh, this is slides that apparently is I think in project updates. This is, um, this is what we will be focusing in Pike release. Scalability, I marked with a minor focus because uh, there is really not much to be done on our side. It's most of the projects we currently have are proven to be deployable. Like images are deployable on couple Hundred, a couple uh, dozens of thousands of servers, you know, the biggest one that I know. And uh, Ansible is proven to be working well around 300 nodes at least. We haven't tried more. And well, this, is, this space covers more than 90% of OpenStack users. So I think that's a quite a good, good, a good number as well. Resiliency. Depends what you mean by resiliency. We deploy OpenStack in a way that, I mean, we really are as resilient as OpenStack we deploy, and that's up to user, that's up to projects, really. But we do care about manageability because uh, open, that is well within the scope of deployment tools, in my opinion, at least. We want to provide, uh, we want to provide day two uh, tool set for Operators. I mean, we go beyond deploy. It's not fire forget. We want, we provide. We want to provide. I mean, we do provide upgrades. We provide reconfigure. We have some tools to uh, to help with uh, with fixing the uh, certain uh, to fix certain issues that may or may not happen uh, that may happen in your cloud. Modularity again, not really deploymental thing. Interoperability, that's actually also very important in deployment tools because uh, one of the features in Cola is that we provide multiple distributions that we can pick the distribution that you're more familiar with, you know, inside containers. And even that, even that, within that, because we are running in containers, there is some distance between uh, your host, so you can run pretty, I've seen Colabrin run on, like, on Arch Linux, on Gentoo, on CoreOS, and on, within con inside containers, uh, we within inside containers we have a. Uh, currently, we can build containers with Oracle Linux, CentOS, Ubuntu, lately Debian, Debian in both Arch and Power, just just uh, not just uh, AMD sixty four. Uh, and rel, yeah, we have rel. I'm losing count myself. <laughs> so yeah, we. I think interoperability is a major is a major focus. Will be a major focus, and uh, and uh, I think we could at that front anyway. Security always and is and will be our major focus. We take pride on. I mean, we try. 
of course, to deploy the most secure cloud that we can that we can, that best to all models we can deploy. For example, that we took measures to remove a common areas of uh, common vectors of attack by, for example, binding just to correct IP. Every service in opens in we opens like we deploy that binds to a IP that is given. So yeah. This is just one of the, of this is one way that we we'll try to rule to, to limit number of at number of uh, problems that, you, that security issues that you may find out, and user experience. Well, we're as good as Ansible or Kubernetes, but Kubernetes, Kola Kubernetes has uh, can work on user experience, and we do. But uh, that's a different topic, and that's our points. Uh, Quinn's uh, plans for Cola. Uh, user experience became my major focus, uh, well, probably. I mean, Quinn's here far away, so it's how, uh, uh, but uh, in Cola Kubernetes, user experience is gonna be work on, to, and it's being worked on as we speak. We also, ex we also will focus heavily on increasing, in, in, in improving our documentation, which is, you know, user experience, but uh, I, this is probably, this is one of the most needed places when we need help, documentation. So project-wide updates. Uh, Okata was a very interesting release for us because before Okata in Newton we have just one project. It's what, it, just one word, it was called Kola. And within Kola directory we had Ansible directory just to be able to deploy images that we built with Kola just have way to deploy these images. However, once we arrived to a, to a place when we felt that we are stable enough and, uh, and we have a community strong enough to move to, the, to our next phase of Kola evolution, we did. And by next phase, I mean, I mean we split out Kola, Kola, uh, Ansible part of Kola to Kola Ansible. And this way, we want to we want to encourage everyone, every other com, com, community to take take uh, use our images as they is without Ansible. You don't you like Puppet? Please deploy them with Puppet. And actually, uh, our images are being used across uh, across multiple projects. Triple O, for example, is using Kola images. So uh, yeah, just to show you how. Uh, just to show you that you don't need to be involved with Cola heavily to be able to use it. So, yeah. And, you know, uh, I encourage everyone, if you like Puppet or Chef, whatever, we still have space in OpenStack for more uh, projects. We can, you can do it for you. You can, you can create the community around Cola images on your own. So let's, what happened during the Okata 2 images? First of all, we have 15 new services. Our, one of the main tasks that we do, I mean, we want to deploy, we want to deploy Big Tent. That's one of the Kola goals, standing Kola goals. We're, we're still not there. Big Tent is quite big and it gets bigger. And we also have lots of non-Big Tent projects, like Ceph, for example. So yeah, during these three months of Okata, we increased the number of images available by 15. And for for users, that's, I was kind of thinking whether it's a feature or not, but it was big enough to, I think, call it out. Um, so deploying with Docker is something relatively new. I mean, it's still it's already a few years into it, but we still we're still finding like we, when you are serious about it, you're still finding the core extent of uh, deploying stuff with containers. So one of it was the uh, one of this was the UID issue that we found. What happened is when you build MariaDB today. When you install MariaDB today inside container, it will create a MariaDB user, which may have ID 1000. You, do, you build Newton, ID, user ID is 1000, MariaDB is deployed, it creates files with user ID 1000. And when you build tomorrow, because you want to upgrade to Okata, the MariaDB user ID will be 1001. 
for whatever reason. It's semi-random. So when you do an upgrade, your MongoDB loses, loses the access to the data, which is you know, not ideal. So that's just one of the issues that, like, I mean, we fixed this issue within Cola and uh, just wanted to show, to show that deploying with containers has its quirks and we're working actively to fix them. It's more than just installing packages. Uh, yeah, and what's our goals with Pike? Well, we want more images. As I said, Big Tent is big, and we don't, we're not done yet. We need more of we need more applications. We need, uh, and I'm pretty sure people will, like, uh, people, I mean, people keep adding different images that may not be big. That like related. we also have ATCD, for example, being added. I can't remember that quite. If, if, I think it was in Newton. So non-open stack services, especially with the new with new uh, kind of uh, like, sorry with new uh, goals of open stack community, which we. Probably have a good thing on Keynote. OpenStack is meant to be reused not only as whole, not only as whole set of compute of compute kit, but just in there, just you know pieces of OpenStack to be used. Cola may be very well fit to this position, to this this model, this uh, this model. So the other big one, I think, is at very at last. We want to create a source of images. So Cola is meant to be building images, but not everyone has to build images. We have repositories of images, and we want to create a list of, we want to create a source of images for other people to consume that are built, that are that past CI of Cola. And you know, when you build them in your own, in your own lab, if you have staging environment, if you have CI environment, that's perfect. Build them all. But not everyone has this sophisticated staging uh, slash CI system. And by having some set of images that were passing Cola CI system, that's what we. That's that's one of the goals that we want to achieve. And uh, we will do master and stable branches. And the other reason for that is uh, that will enable really users to live in this holy grail of OpenStack of OpenStack operations kinda, and that doing constant upgrades, like upgrade every day, and uh, that will allow people to just you know constantly upgrade. So when some security patch was uh, will be released in one of the up underlying uh, services you'll get the security patch right away. Cola and Sybil in Okata. Reconfiguration optimization. Mm, if you run reconfigure back in Newton, it was slow. That's just an simple thing. I mean, that's us multiple things. But uh, we noticed that, I mean, this is one of the feedbacks that we got in uh, in, in feedback session in Barcelona, and well, we got to quite a long lens, reorganized lots of code to make it better. And I think it's better to be, it's better today. So just want to emphasize this as a, a kind of you know message, show, uh, send the message that yes, we want to listen to feedback. Yes, we want to fix it. And this is inc incredibly important to hear from users. What are the issues of Cola and how do we fix it? Changing haircut to FluentD. So uh, this goes to the logging infrastructure that is deployed alongside Cola. And uh, within that, when you deploy, open, when you deploy uh, Cola with centralized logging, you are able to right away get Elasticsearch and Kibana, and we use what used to be Heka. Heka was a Mozilla, serve, Mozilla open source project that was deprecated, which means we needed to uh, we needed to uh, switch it to something else. It, uh, after quite a discussion, we stopped at Fluentd, and now we have no Heka left. 
We also added 11 new roles. Role in Ansible is a separate uh, service that is going to deploy, which means now we can deploy 11 more services than we did before. Call Ansible py uh, Pike goals. That's first one is better gates. That's probably the one goal that is standing, like we, call, we always improve our gates, but we always can have more and better. And uh, one thing that we definitely need is to more deployment scenarios, deploy more services in our gates. There's different use cases, different, uh, different sorts of reference implementations and make sure that they work with, you know, we won't break anything. Another thing is we want to have a full upgrade gates. And by that, I mean every commit to call out is more than once a day. We'll be deploying latest table branch. We'll be upgrading this to master. And uh, that, will, that will not only ensure that Cola didn't break our upgrades, but we'll be able to also provide feedback to the project teams. Let's say, I don't know, Neutron. If, they, if something happened to upgrades on multi-node, that's, that's, we'll, we should, should be able to see that and we'll be able to help them to fix upgrades because before the actual release happens, so the users will not have to suffer through them. Uh, and that also resonates with multi-node gates and currently we deploy all in one in Cola Ansible. We want to deploy, well, multi-node HA OpenStack. So, yeah, again, lots of things appear when you deploy clustered and we want to catch those. Another thing, yes, documentation improvements. I cannot stress that enough. We need better documentation. We, that's probably the weakest, uh, the weakest uh, piece of our project. And uh, one of the things that I would really ask every, uh, people here to, uh, to, to give us is use cases. We want to know what are you deploying. We want to make sure that whatever you are deploying works well and we, and, and we want to document, have, document the most common use cases so other people will have easier time going through the pains. Uh, best practices is another thing that we discussed. It's like, it kind of is like use cases but not really. It's uh, okay, so I have this happening to, like this happening to my containers, how do I fix them? or don't do that, use this kind of versioning, versions of uh, packages or like, like Docker, you know, all that, all that operators uh, tricks and tips that is extremely useful. And easier quick start. It's quite easy today. It can be easier. We'll be working on it. Um, and uh, we already have some materials that are even easier than quick start. And yeah, we'll, we'll work on it. And also more roles. Again, big tent, we want to deploy more and uh, it's well within our, uh, well within our scope and goals. And Cola Kubernetes, that's a new kit in the block. The, the, you know, everyone's talking about Kubernetes now, so we, want, we don't want to stay behind. And we, we made quite a lot of changes since Barcelona Summit. You may have seen our presentation during, Barce during Barcelona Summit when we, we made live demo of Cola Kubernetes when we actually deployed full-fledged Kubernetes on stage. We removed all of that code, almost all of that code since. <laughs> uh, we, tr we moved to Helm. Helm is a package slash templating management tool for Kubernetes. It's in, within Kubernetes uh, namespace. It's a separate project with a very cool community. We were working with them, implemented a couple of features to Helm to enable deploying the complex beast that OpenStack is. And currently we're using Helm to provide, provide resources to all Kubernetes to deploy full OpenStack. Uh, we, so what we do we want to use native Kubernetes templating mechanism, which is Helm. We, we 
used something called, like we call, we call it microarchitecture, uh, plug, uh, microarchitecture, microservice architecture. It's uh, one, like we have lots of discussions with that about how to do propel the helm and how to arrive to sort of flexibility that will require us, our users to, I mean, we require to deploy different open stacks. Like, for example, in, within, with Cola, we want to enable brownfield migration to Cola Kubernetes as well. So what we did is we created a microservice ar architecture. And my friend described it to me in a very interesting way. I really like it. It's like you have all the puzzles and every service in OpenStack, Nova, Nova Compute, Nova API, Neutron Service is a puzzle piece of it. You just throw it out on the, on the table and you pick what you want and you assemble them to OpenStack you want. So it's, it, it allows you to as much flexibility as you want. However, we also have overarching, com, uh, overarching uh, charts like compute kit chart. A chart is a equivalent package in Helm that allows you to, if you want just generic OpenStack, it's gonna be one command. If you want to deploy every single thing manually because you want to migrate from your Brownfield deployment and put a service at the time to migrate to the new service, it's also gonna be possible. We, we want to have this golden middle ground between, uh, between ease of use and flexibility should you want it. So one thing that we did is we did kind of test-driven development. One of the things that I'm extremely proud about Cola Kubernetes, what Cola Kubernetes community created, is one of the most sophisticated gates that I've ever seen in OpenStack. Every commit to Cola Kubernetes will, deploy, will be tested on multi-node gates on Ceph backend the way it should be run in production, in our opinion. Which means every Cola Kubernetes is being deployed in OpenStack's infra couple dozen times a day in a production ready architecture, sort of, as much as we could achieve with the limited resources that Infra offers. However, it's really, really solid gating system that, I'll, that enables us to ensure that everything that we do will keep working and will not break, will not break it. So yes, this, is, this was very painful at the beginning. It was, a, I, it was a lot of work to make it to at this point, but right now it's really something to be proud of. And we do have an ambitious roadmap for first release of OpenStack. We created roadmap on uh, uh, Atlanta PTG, on PAC PTG. And one of the, and just to highlight, like the, the list of features that we want to have on 1.0 is quite long and it is, quite quite complete to but just to just to highlight a few easy security upgrades that will also resonate with cola images publishing we want to be able to run cola kubernetes in a way that will be almost constantly upgradable so again security patch comes into from the secu from the security patch being published to mariadb to being deployed in your open stack we want it to be less than a day we'll build every day on images you run and deploy every day and upgrade every day and that's gonna roll in the security upgrades without you watching, watching them extremely easy, extremely fast, which is critical. We want to start with pro release upgrades. Uh, most of the release upgrades are not that hard. I mean, not with, con with containers, but there are a few, Come, namely, Probably the hardest upgrade was Newton Toyota with placement uh, API being introduced, and we want to be able to to upgrade that kind of thing. So since we're deploying first, uh, since it's going to be our first release, we don't really need release upgrades in a way that you deploy 1.0. We need upgrades from 1.0 to 2.0. And that's why we do, we do prototype. We want to make sure that nothing will stand in our way. And we're pretty close to have actual upgrades, to be honest, because, well. And brownfield friendly as much as possible. Yeah, no, brownfield will always be painful. That's just how the life goes. But we do want to, we, asked, we I mean, 
there are lots of OpenStack already running, and once you run OpenStack, we don't want you to be left alone, and we want as much as possible to be able to migrate from existing OpenStack to Cola Kubernetes. And we will actually have a very sophisticated use case for that because one of our lead uh, contributors is going to do that as soon as we as we, as soon as that we, as we're done on his couple couple hundred he has couple of class open source clusters each uh, three or so hundred nodes so yeah that will be quite interesting use case so closing notes yes please help us uh, it's an ambitious project we still need need help. There are many ways to, to contribute. You don't need to write to be writing code. We are encouraged to write code. I encourage to review, but this is not the only way to uh, to contribute. As I said, we love our feedback. Don't be shy. Come to visit our IRC. Say, hey guy, this hey guys, this is not working. This is break. This is breaking. Or I don't know how to do it. Please. Or we need to do it in this way, and this is not documented. We need that kind of feedback. We need to be. We need. We need, the hard, we need the hard truths, we need the ugly truths, so we can make it better at the end. Of course, patches, reviews, just the regular, what you normally would think about of, uh, of contribution. As I said, we take pride of our openness, we take pride in our diversity. I would love to see more faces and more names on our reviewer list. Bugs, also, great way to, that means, if. If project has no bugs in the in the queue, that means nobody uses it. So yes, please, yeah. And you can spread the word around. If you actually like our project, I encourage you to try. Please tell your friends. <laughs> Maybe they have the same problems as you do. And you know, and not everyone has uh, is here in this in this room. Not everyone has the stamina to wait for to 5 p.m. last day on summit. I would love to see more people. And well, we are we all our friends out there, so it's never enough, we you can never have enough friends. So again, thank you for attend for attending in this late hour, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. So uh, if we're first taking a first look at call out, is there, would you recommend one over the other, the Ansible method or the Kubernetes method? Uh, Ansible by uh, hands down. I mean, Ansible is stable. Yeah. Kubernetes is still de in development. Well, I mean, at some point it's gonna be as stable as it's not there yet. Yeah. Ansible is stable, it's being run in production, it's being battle tested. It's the one that I would encourage. In fact, if you want, uh, I run workshops two days ago on Tuesday. It's called Novice Install with Cola. Well, video is published. Materials are out there in internet. In the internet, we have quick start guide. Feel free to uh, try it at home. And uh, if you run into any problems, just give us a holler on the IRC channel. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Great talk, Michael. Uh, so in Kubernetes, I think it's very famous because uh, they don't build the Kubernetes containers, right? You just pull it and start it. The, the scheduler, the controller, etcd, mm -hmm. CNI, we pull it and start it. Uh, and uh, I brought this a couple of times in meetings as well, and we, we talked about this the session yesterday. Uh, what is the roadmap in Pike to make Kala just pullable and startable? And, and have a mechanism to automatically uh, push our master, building master containers. Right now, we can only pull our uh, golden stable. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you're an upstream developer, you, you don't care much about stable, right? I mean, you, you want to like be uh, play master, play. right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and and you have to like spend four hours on your laptop building hundred containers, or, or, or at least yeah. like the changed ones. So what we're doing today is um, every time. A commit passes Cola gates. Every time a commit is merged, we build all stack of whole stack images of images. They are tested, and we save them in certain places in tarballs. In this is hacky way, but that's what we're doing. Certain uh, we save the bunch of images in OpenStack infra. What we want to do later is to for master 
and all this and at least Okata's table, later Pi's table, and all these tables that we that will have this code uh, to do daily. Day once a day, we're gonna like this is still in process, but we're gonna push all these images that we built that day to Docker Hub, which means in general you have at uh, you have at least 24 hours old, like at, sorry, at most 24 hours old images. That we, and uh, once we upgrade, once we increase, as we will be increasing our gating, uh, our gating scenarios, images will be more and more resilient as the same, uh, because again, they need to pass the gates to be, uh, to be accepted, to be saved. So as we pass it, the more and more testing the, uh, each image will take, get, and uh, the more stable the whole stack will become. And hopefully to, at some point, uh, you will be, you will be able. I hope we will be trusted enough so we can just upgrade your open stacks like you know, in in a proverbial Chrome. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much then for coming, and I hope that.